back to my YouTube channel, but if you're new here, my name is Brittany and I'm a Chicago-based lifestyle content creator. So we're about to jump right into my favorites from the month of May. So if you're new here to my channel or if you haven't watched any of my pre previous favorites videos, every month, like since the beginning of the year, every month I've been rounding up my favorite like products, movie, music, TV show, all of like the above. So go check out those past ones if you haven't already. And since this month is AI yeah, month or Asian, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I wanted to focus all of my favorites from this month around like highlighting movies, TV shows, businesses that all fall into that category. So without further ado, let's get so without further ado, let's get started. So starting with beauty, as always, my favorite topic. So I'm going to share two picks for this month. And the first of them are one of my tried and true staple products. And that is press on nails, specifically those from Glammatic. So I have some on now. Don't look too closely at my cuticles because I'm in need of an actual manicure, but you can kind of see. Oh yeah, these actually my cuticles don't look too bad from this angle, but I actually just did these this morning. Um, I think this pair is called Rose, but I love, I've really gotten hot and heavy into the press on game. So pre pandemic, I used to get my nails done like at the salon, just like gel or uh, what is it? The dip powder like every three weeks or so. And then obviously when salon clo salons closed during the pandemic and then I just never, or and then I just got, I started doing like press on nails at home. And then once everything reopened, I just never went back. And now it's like, oh wait, I'm saving myself a lot of money because I mean, Glammatic press on nails are a little more expensive than the ones at CVS or Target or whatever, like the Kiss brand. Personally, I do think they're like a bit higher quality. So you can buy these obviously from, their website or I just usually buy them from Sephora and they're, they're just cool because they have like really cool designs on them. I mean this is like a pretty modest like basic neutral-ish um, type of I feel like nail from them because it's just like a baby or a ballerina baby pinkish color but a lot of like pretty much if you watch any of my past videos and you've seen my nails in any of those those are literally all glamnatic nails um, and I'll try to include like some pictures and stuff of like from the product page um here but anyway glamnetic was started by an asian american founder she's pretty young i'm actually looking up right now just to remember how young she is because i want to say now she's maybe she might be just now 30 which good for all these like young brand founders getting out there and like really capitalizing on the market oh she was actually born in bangkok and then moved to la to like the u.s and started the glamnetic nails i think around the 2019 era so honestly kind of a perfect time to be creating like an at-home beauty solution because like i mean no one knew this but the pandemic was right around the corner but these nails usually cost i want to say they usually cost about 15 dollars a pack and i feel like i usually get maybe two sets at least two sets depends on the shape of your nail like the shape and size of your nail beds but i get usually at least two sets out of them and they usually last for like almost two weeks if you apply them right which i mean it did take me a little while to get my like application game down but now i have it like really set and so i feel like they last almost two weeks but anyway that's my first beauty pick glamnetic nails obsessed forever and always like i will be remaining true to glamnetic nails because i mean i think they're really like i said they look really nice and like people always are complimenting me on my nails and are truly shocked when i tell them that they're press on nails i'm like no i'm not spending 50 60 dollars at the salon to get these done i'm doing them at home okay so then the second product that i'm sharing is from a brand called Colfi, and it is their eyeliner it's just this like so this is the underlined Kajal, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, eyeliner. And the color is Cheeky Kiku. And it's just like a dark brown. I mean, I have it on now. You might not really be able to tell. Since it's a dark brown, um, it's like kind of like a, a subtle color. But it's just this like dark brown eyeliner, like a, almost like a gel, like a gel-ish crayon type of highlighter. Eyeliner, excuse me. And Kolfi was founded by Priyanka Ganju, and she is South Asian. And I mean, besides, and let's see, and it was founded, oh yeah, in 2021. So not very long ago at all. But it, besides like these eyeliners, they have a handful of other products too. Like they, and again, like you can buy this at the, from the Colfi website or from Sephora too. Like this is, these products are also carried at Sephora, but they have like a, like an um, concealer, which I actually do really want to try. It's supposed to be a crease proof one. And it's, I feel like it's not crazy expensive. So there's that. They have like eyeshadows. Oh yeah. This is that eyeliner I was just talking about. Oh yeah. And all of their products are clean too, which is always great. Um, a brow gel, like a cream blush blush and then a, a lipstick so a lot of like basics um like basic products like you could do a full face 
pretty much with all of that. But another good or another up and coming brand that I have really been loving. And so far, like I said, I only have this. I've sampled a lot of the pro other products in the store, um, like that concealer that I mentioned, but I have just not purchased it yet. Those are my beauty picks. Moving into the wellness realm. So this isn't necessarily a product, which I feel like usually my like wellness picks are actual products. This is more of like a person or a service. So I have recently, if you've been following along my channel, you've heard me talk about how I'm really trying to get, I've been trying to get back into a workout routine. I finally have actually really, I'm not going to say fully gotten into a routine, but I am at probably like step three of five of a really felt well of a really like solid workout routine. And I've been going to, I started going to reformer Pilates like a couple weeks ago, or maybe a little over a month ago at this point, but I was looking for some, I'm looking for something to supplement it with at home. Unfortunately, I'm not like fully made of money, so I can't go to Pilates every single day, but, or Pilates like in the studio every single day. But I did come across like in searching for like things to supplement um, my workouts with at home. I did come across a well, or a Pilates, online instructor or creator yeah i guess she'd be an online instructor and her name is flow with mira so she is based out of indonesia i don't know if she is indonesian but i know she lives in indonesia as of now and she has like a full youtube channel of pilates workouts that are it's like they're i mean they seem like a, it's a really good range of workouts from like very beginner level up to like probably more intermediate i guess you could say and there some of them are like 10 minutes some of them are 20 or 30 minutes so a pretty wide range of workouts that you can do and again it's all free i i don't know if on her website if she has like a paid subscription or anything like that but i feel like for it kind of reminds me of like tone it up like when they were kind of first starting and everything was kind of the same way like free and easy to access it's kind of it gives me that same type of vibe so i've been like i haven't done a ton of the workouts yet so far yet because like i said i'm just getting back into my routine but the ones that i have done i do like and so that is something i would definitely recommend checking out if you're looking to kind of like get if you're looking to add something to your workout routine or really start one at all there is a pretty wide range of uh, videos that you could try out so would recommend that okay and then moving now into the entertainment realm so we'll start with my album of the month and this is an album i don't physically i don't have a physical copy of because usually i share like the vinyl or the actual like record that i have i wish i did and i tried to get one on record store day but i did not get it and now they are marked up like so high i'm just waiting for a repress but that is leve's album a night at the symphony so it's leve and the icelandic symphony orchestra so i didn't really i just discovered who leve was in maybe like end of march early august or not early august end of march early april she had a there were a couple like trending sounds on tiktok that were that i had just heard but i didn't know who they were i honestly thought they were like an older jazz artist and i didn't really like look honestly too much into it but then i kept hearing them and i was like oh who is this like what is this and then when i saw the record store day list come out and as i was like combing through it I realized like her name had s sounded familiar because I'd seen her on TikTok before. So then I did go and listen to a lot of her music and she's a very, very cool sound. Like sh it's kind of like jazz, it's like uh, jazzy, like an Etta James it, or Billy, not quite Billy Holiday, but um, kind of in that same realm of jazz. Like you would think she was like 70 years old and like had been singing in jazz clubs since like the 30s or something like that. But she's just some like 20 something year old girl. So she is Chinese and Icelandic. Like I think her dad, her mom is Chinese and her dad is Icelandic. She grew up mostly in Iceland. She's been living in the US for a little while now. So I don't know if I'm towing the line of Asian American, but I'm including her in this roundup because I really like her album. But it's very i think her part of her whole like ethos around her like creative her bar around her like artistry is that she wants to make jazz accessible and like bring basically like bring jazz back like make it mainstream i guess is the right the right word so um like the live at the symphony album is really really cool sounding i just hadn't really heard music that sounded like this that was popular like it's on tiktok like that is very like like she's doing a good job so far at making the like music pop like poppy and accessible and like what the, what the kids want to hear if you will she's also going to be performing at um Lollapalooza this year which I'm like, really excited to see her I think that'll be like with the Chicago 
orchestra like symphony orchestra which will be really really cool and i'm curious to see how that's like gonna how that will all pan out i am like the the schedule for lollapalooza was just posted the other day and i feel like there's it's gonna be hard to see all the artists that i want to see at the same time but she is one that i'm prioritizing to see because i think it'll just be a really really cool performance but if you haven't checked out leve's album in general she actually just had a new album come out this oh no not this week i think it just got re-released oh yeah um her al her album bewitch just got re-released like pretty recently so would recommend checking her out as if you're in the market for some new music because it is it's just like really easy sounding and her voice just sounds really interesting so again would definitely recommend checking it out okay and my tv show that i'm sharing is the one that i'm not fully caught up with yet i'm about half i think there's six episodes out i don't know if that's that all that will come out but i'm on episode three and i'm really really liking it it's called the sympathizer and it's on hbo max or max whatever they're calling themselves this these days it's on hbo but it's about so it is based on a book which it's not a true story but like it could have been a true story in some regard in terms of like people like this did exist but it's based on a book that actually did win a pulitzer prize by a vietnamese american writer and so the whole gist of the like the storyline and, and these aren't necessarily spoilers if you haven't watched the show but the gist of the show is that the main character who is actually remains unnamed like we only know him as captain throughout the show and I think that that I, well, from what I read we never find out his name and I think that adds like the allure but he's essentially a spy during the Vietnam War so he is from North Vietnam but he is has like infiltrated and he's a mole in the South Vietnamese army. And so he's feeding information back to North Vietnam. And it's just really interesting because like it's a spy story, but presented amongst like real life events in terms of like these things actually happen. And the author of the book did say he wanted to share like the story of like the Vietnam War and on a more personal level, but like people would have a hard time obviously like really tuning into the politics without the story behind it so that's kind of where the spy angle comes from and i will fully admit i did not know i realized as i started watching the show i was like i know nothing about the vietnam war besides like i know a lot about the and i feel like i'm a person that i know a lot about history and things in general but i didn't know anything about the vietnam war and i'm sure as an american or someone that grew up in america going to schools in america that's probably intentional because i mean america did not fare well in that war and it was not popular in the US. I'm, I'm sure that like feeds into like how I didn't know that much about it but um I knew a lot about like the anti-war protests like that's what I really know about and especially I went to Kent State which famously or infamously was the site of a huge anti-war protest in 1970 but otherwise I like as I was watching I was like why did this why how did the United States get in this war why did this war start and I really truly didn't know a lot about it and I feel like this is educating me a lot on it but also I mean, it always comes back to like imperialism and all of that. But like, I didn't realize France was so heavily involved in Vietnam that like Vietnam used to be a part of French Indochina. Like there's just, and the main character is half French, half Vietnamese. Like his dad is, was in the French Navy, I think. And his mom was Vietnamese. So it just is really interesting that you learn the politics of what was going on internally in Vietnam and then how all these outside players like in the United States play into it um and but you see it through like the personal struggle of this main character too and how he's like interacting with all these other people so I think it's really interesting and it's very like since it is like a spy story it's kind of fun to watch in some ways too because like the episode I was watching last night I was like oh my god like what is about to happen like he's he's gonna get caught. like something big is about to happen so um would if you haven't seen it oh and it's just the acting is really good so sandra oh famously christina yang from Grey's anatomy she's the main character in it and i think oh, it also seems interesting too is like again this takes place in the 1970s so this is when immigration had been like immigration was pretty big in the united states but also there are a lot of people whose families immigrated here years and years before but now they are american like Feel like americans because they were born here and like they are americans and she is asian she's i think her character is japanese american but she like the person that she works with always trying to get her to feed into be, being japanese but she keeps saying she's like i am american and like i was born in gardena like, in, in california and so i feel like that is an interesting like you see a lot about identity in terms of like she is asian american but she's american first 
and maybe other people don't see her that way whereas then there is this other main character who he is Vietnamese but like he had he went to college in America and like everyone is obsessed with America which is kind of crazy to like as an American I'm like you guys don't even know like it's not that deep, but they're obsessed with like American entertainment, which that is our biggest export as Americans. So I don't know, it's just really interesting. And like, I really like it so far. So would recommend checking out if you have not. And then lastly, my, my favorite movie of the month, the movie, I actually saw this a couple, I might've even seen it in April, but I kind of saw this slacking off. I'm going to the movies recently. But anyway, my movie pick of the month is Monkey Man by Dave Patel. He also is starring in the movie executive produced by Jordan Peele. I saw this movie, like I said, I think in April. And when I walked out of there, I was like, this is the best movie I've seen all year. Granted, it's only like the year I was still young. And I would say now that I've seen Challengers, that's like a close second. Like they're kind to me right now, like neck and neck. But that movie was so good. It was like, it was so like the way, like the cinematography was so cool. Like it's again, one of those things where I don't know any of the characters names and I don't think any of them, like the main character, he doesn't have a name technically, but like you're, it's just like, there isn't a ton of dialogue necessarily in it either. It's like, you really have to be paying attention because a lot of the story is told through like their facial expressions or the actions that they're doing, or just like, you have to like, see like, how's everyone in this room kind of reacting to each other. And the gist of it is Dave, Dev Patel, did I call him Dave just a moment ago? I meant Dev Patel if I did. Okay, Brittany. But Dev Patel, who, I mean, first came onto the scene in Slumdog Millionaire, another outstanding film back in what, 2000? I was in college when that came out, so 2006, seven, something like that. He plays the monkey man. So he's a boxer, essentially. I will say the movie is pretty gruesome in that a lot of, like it's, again, it's a cinematography, like you're up close and personal, like when he's in the ring, you were like, feel like you're in there fighting with him. There's a lot of, it's an action movie. It's kind of like John Wick, but I think a little better than some John Wick movies because there's a lot more emotion into why he's fighting everyone. Whereas John Wick is like an assassin and like Dev Patel's character is kind of an assassin, but in a way that he is, it's his own personal revenge story for him, but also for his country too, because the kind of a big plot line of the movie is the caste system in India, which again, is something I didn't really know much about. And it, it led me to dig a lot deeper into it. And it's like the caste and then like the religious, the religion and all of, there's a lot of different layers, but um, it is, it's just good. Cause you are like, it's a, you are, on his side like the whole i'm speaking for myself you are on his side but he's like literally killing people and so it's like okay did he need to kill them i don't know but like also maybe he did so i don't know i just thought it was so well good and so well shot and then afterwards when i learned oh and like even so it was mostly shot i think in mumbai a lot of it was shot in mumbai i know it's supposed to take place in mumbai but i think they also shot a lot of the scenes or no it actually was shot on some like remote island in indonesia somewhere because it was shot like during the pandemic basically and so when i and so it, it just like looks so beautiful and like they're the colors the light the like the costuming and i don't know it's just this, it was a movie that i really enjoyed just like visually looking at and then afterwards i didn't know any of this going into the movie but i learned kind of a lot more about how I watched like a TikTok because suddenly once I saw it, everything like my TikTok, my for you page on TikTok was all about Monkey Man. But I did not know like the the struggle that Dave Patel. Oh my god, I just said it again. Dev Patel went through to get this movie made. So and like I said, this was shot mostly during the pandemic, and so it was really like it was very scrappy because they couldn't have like a huge production because it was very limited on how many people you could have there because of the pandemic. Well, and by, by I mean it was shot during the pandemic. I think like in twenty twenty one because they were supposed to go into production. I think he said at the beginning beginning of twenty twenty, and then like that had to stop because of the pandemic. Then they finally were able to kind of get it together, but. It was just so scrappy. Like, I think he said they were like paying, it got down to a point where they were like basically running out of money. And in some of the action sequences when like a table would fall apart and like, cause a body slammed onto it, they would be putting that table back together to have to reshoot the scene because they didn't, they didn't have the money to like buy another one. Or there was like one big scene when they're in this like a really big nightclub where Dev, in an interview, like Dev Patel was saying that if you, like the way that they shot it 
all of the tables that were there like none of them they were all were supposed to have the glass tops but they were broken or the glass tops never arrived or something so the tables just didn't have tops on them so pretty much the whole scene was shot from everyone's like chest up so that you didn't you couldn't tell that and then there was like points where people were buying stuff on like their own credit cards to, like get the stuff that they needed to finish shooting he broke his hand multiple times like it was just crazy and then come to do all of that and then it didn't even get really picked up by like the network it was supposed or by the production company that it was supposed to get picked up by I think and then Netflix ended up picking it up and it was supposed to oh that's what it was it was supposed to be straight to TV on Netflix and it just never they never put it out and it was just sitting on the shelves at Netflix since 2021 ish and Jordan Peele somehow managed to see the film and was like oh no I need this so he bought it from Netflix and then got it brought to like the big screen. So I'm sure maybe it'll end up on Netflix. Actually, it might be on Prime or something already, but I would, it was just such a good movie. And again, it was a little bit educational and that I learned a lot about the caste system in India. So would recommend checking it out if you haven't already. It was like, it was a little funny. It was, like I said, very, it was pretty gruesome, but like everyone was also so beautiful in the movie. So um definitely something i would recommend if you've made it this far in the video thank you so much for watching hope that you've enjoyed these picks like i said i wanted to focus these since it is aapi heritage month i want i wanted to take an opportunity to highlight and celebrate people in that community even though i'm not a part of it for me highlighting marginalized communities is something that's very important as a member of what myself being like a woman and being black which my my may my march and february favorites videos were highlighting both black history month and then women's um, history month respectively but i think i've been trying to do for the past I don't know a lot of my adult life but I will say especially the past few years that I I've tried to like make a conscious effort of is to try is to diversify the things that I watch um the things that I listen to just to make sure I'm hearing a wide variety of voices in the media that I consume but then also this is where I've been trying to be better about about as being a conscious consumer in D really like trying to shop equitably as I can and again diversify the brands that I'm buying for buying from so so anyway all that to say I hope that maybe this gives people some recommendations of things that maybe they have or haven't heard from or like stories that they haven't heard to be able to hear them so if you have recommendations for me for anything as always I love hearing them leave me a comment down below don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more content from me but again thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one